Uh, we next have Professor Matthew Kimona, who will be uh, from Place Alliance, who will be presenting what people want from their local neighbourhoods. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'll just wait for the slides to come up. OK, so. So I'm going to talk about the, this piece of work, Home Comforts, which was a piece of work that we did um, during the pandemic, actually. Um, but before I talk about that, I just wanted to briefly refer back to uh, some work that we were doing just prior to the pandemic, which sort of fed into the, to, to the Home Comforts uh, work. Um, and that was uh, some uh, a study that was looking at how value is created uh, it, through design and what are the different aspects of design that, that deliver value, value of place, place value. Uh, and we put together this, this, this wiki, place value wiki, which is still there, and which brings together studies from uh, all around the world that, that, that link different aspects of value, whether it's economic or social or environmental uh, or health value, with different aspects of how we design places. Um, and showed that there is this virtuous loop between uh, the quality of place uh, and the value that it delivers to uh, society in these different ways. And that there is an awful lot of evidence, hundreds of studies uh, are from around the world that make the, these links very definitive. Uh, and uh, it, the wiki actually is divided into all of these different categories. I'm not going to really talk about uh, this today. Um, but one thing that came out of that uh, study, uh, or looking at all that evidence, was this sort of ladder of place quality. Um, so from looking at all of that evidence, we were able to identify, well, what are the things that we should definitely avoid in neighbourhoods uh, at one end of the ladder? And at the other end, what are the things that we should definitely require? Because we know that they are fundamentally good for us uh, as, as citizens. Whoops, that's working. All right. So... At the, at, the, at the bottom of the ladder are those qualities which we should absolutely avoid because they're pretty fundamentally bad for us. Um, and these are things like this, places that are totally car dependent, um, places that are dominated uh, by traffic or that are poorly maintained uh, and managed. And, and and then the ladder that moves up to, to qualities that we've got to be a little bit careful about because the, the you know, the, there is evidence that points in both directions. So things like shared spaces or cul-de-sacs or living at very high, living in, in high-rise developments. The evidence is a bit uh, equivocal about, about these sorts of qualities. So we need to be careful about being uh, too specific in, in what we require. Then there's a range of qualities that there's good evidence that says these things are, these are good for us and that we should generally aspire to achieve things like a comfortable public realm, um, a, a level of sort of activity in, in, in the street environment, continuity of facade, surveillance and so forth. But what I really wanted to mention was the things at the top of the ladder, which is the things that we should absolutely require because we know that they are fundamentally good for us. And there is huge volumes of evidence to suggest that these things are good for us as human beings. Greedness in the environment low level of traffic in the places that we live in, in our neighbourhoods, places that we can cycle uh, and walk, places where there's a mix of uses, places that are reasonably co compact and coherent, there's a bit of a density to allow that, and public transport connectivity. It's not a long list, but those are the fundamental things that we need to uh, uh, achieve. Uh, we need to require them almost in, 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 in neighbourhoods. Now, when we came to uh, the pandemic, this, this, that work was just before the pandemic, and suddenly the pandemic hit, and uh, we were at home thinking, well, what are we going to do now? We couldn't continue the work that we were doing. Um, so we thought, well, let's do a survey, an online survey. There's a lot of people on home, at home, you'll remember this whole period with continuous lockdowns, and, 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 and everybody was at home a lot more, and, um, and we were doing all these things from home that previously we were doing in person, in, in actual real places, um, and and there was evidence that started to be published to suggest that, that this was impacting on us. You know, it wasn't a, a good thing for our mental health and, and physical health and, and so forth and our, our, our general sense of happiness. Um, and so we thought, well, this is a great opportunity to stress test our homes and our neighbours. 
and, 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 and use this period when so many of us were at home to determine whether our neighbourhoods and our homes were, were given us what we, uh, what we need uh, as individuals, uh, as families and as society. And this was the home comforts work. Um, it looked at homes, it looked at neighbourhoods, it looked at communities. It was looking at how they were performing in terms of those everyday uh, tasks and uh, on every, everyday needs. Um, and how then we might design them better in the future based on that learning, based on that, that stress testing uh, experience, if you like. Because what was, I think, clear from day one is that we were probably never going to return to exactly the way it was before. Uh, and we haven't. You know, we do a lot more online. We're at home a lot more. We're in our neighbor home neighbourhoods a lot more than we ever were before. So we launched a survey. It was a short, non-targeted survey. Um, and we thought we would get responses uh, we ended up getting uh two and a half thousand responses was it three and a half thousand i can't remember now we have two and a half thousand responses uh so people were obviously at home and very bored because they responded to our survey um and it was a bunch of closed questions um we started off asking people about themselves and who they were um partly because we wanted to see who was responding because we wanted to see whether it was reflective of society or there was just a bunch of urban designers that were responding to our to our survey and it turned out it wasn't just a bunch of urban designers actually it was it, it, broadly speaking um the response more or less reflected society in, in, in national data that we, we had at our disposal we, we checked it against all of these different things um although there was definitely a, a bit of a bias to london there was there was a higher concentration of people from london responding and a bit of a bias to white collar workers but other than that it was reasonably represented so what did we find well what did people tell us well first of all they told us things about their homes um most people were comfortable in their homes during that period um but millions weren't um, so about two thirds said that they were comfortable. About a sixth said that they were uncomfortable. Um, and that, that equates to about almost 11 million people. So a lot of people were, were not particularly comfortable at, in their own home environment during that period. Houses were more comfortable than flats, perhaps unsurprisingly. Um, uh, and uh, the higher you got, the less comfortable they, they were for people generally. The newest dwellings, perhaps worryingly, were the least comfortable for people. Uh, the older they were, the more comfortable uh, they tended to be. E-workers, interestingly, were, were, were said that they were the least comfortable, which is slightly odd in some senses because they were some people who were still going out to work. Um, but nevertheless, that's that's what they said. It reflected a particular group uh, in society, of course. Um, and social renters uh, uh, suffered uh, the worst. So tenure was the strongest predict predictor of, uh, of comfort, with homeowners generally much more comfortable. So why are some, why were some less comfortable? Um, fundamentally, one of the key things was access to private open space. And what you found is they had a, 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 a private garden, they were the most comfortable, uh, then people with a terrace, then people with a balcony, and then people with nothing at all. So at least some form of private open space, even if that was just a balcony, was really critical to people's levels of comfort. More space means more comfort, perhaps unsurprisingly, when we were at home uh, for, for, for such a, a long period of time. Um, most, but not all, said that they could work reasonably OK from home. Uh, about 7% struggled, and they were very much concentrated within the social renters uh, group uh, that responded to uh, the survey. Um, Preferences for internal design we asked about. And, and interestingly, people were asking for more cellularity. So we'd had decades when people were opening up their, their, their flats and their homes and taking out walls. And during the pandemic, they wanted to put those walls back in because they wanted separation. Um, and uh, e even if we had plenty of space, we wanted more. So just a couple of quotes to illustrate that. Uh, people who, who with a back garden felt, you know, something that, that they very much were enjoying during that period and, 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 and decent standards within the home. What about the neighbourhoods? Um, well, neighbourhoods, uh, generally people reported being happy with their neighbourhoods than they were with their homes, although there was still a significant minority that uh, were not happy with their neighbourhood, about 4%, close to about 
3 million people, if you extrapolated it across the UK. Um, interestingly, urban was just as good as uh, suburban uh, and rural. People were, were, were equally happy if they lived in an urban environment. High rise came out poorly. So neighborhoods with a lot of high rise tended to, to, to come out more poorly than those without. Uh, newer, again, came off worse. Um, owner occupiers were happier with their neighborhoods. Um, uh, and, um, and, and even if people said that they were, were happy with their neighborhoods, that didn't compensate if the space that they had in their home wasn't sufficient. So, so the neighborhood qualities didn't compensate for a, a lack of quality within the home itself. Fundamentally, what people said they wanted was green, mixed use, less traffic and connected neighborhoods. So parks, uh, proximity to a park was the strongest predictor of satisfaction. Any more than five minutes further than, than uh, uh, from a park, you saw those satisfaction levels dropping off very, very, very sharply. And the same for local services like shops um, uh, and, and, and other facilities. Again, people wanted to be within five minutes uh, of those critical local facilities. Uh, people wanted space for walking and quieter, uh, quieter streets. Um, and people generally saw that there was a bit of an opportunity in COVID because, you know, to 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 actually achieve some of these things because we were learning from 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 the experience of people. And again, some quotes that reflect the value of local parks, for example, and also the value of, you know, not having to travel a long distance for some of those critical local facilities. What about communities? Well, we asked people about their pre-COVID experience of their communities. Most people said that there was a sense of community, but it was a little bit rudimentary in most neighbourhoods, but there was at least some uh, rural, people responding from rural uh, um, uh, areas tended to say uh, there was a stronger sense of community. Again, you build high, the amount, higher the amount of uh, the sense of community tended to fall off. Uh, older tended to need more community, so very much the same sort of things coming through. And churn was a fundamental issue, in particular in the social rented sector, uh, sorry, the private rented sector, where there was a lot of churn. People tended to feel that there was much less sense uh, of community in those sorts of places. What about um, during COVID? Well, people really felt that a sense of community had helped them through um the, the you know what we all went through during lockdown but what we what we found is places that already had an existing strong sense of community were the ones that benefited from that sense of community and from an increased sense of community whereas those that had a much weaker uh sense of community benefited to some degree that people felt there was a you know that people were pulling together but to, to a lesser extent and again higher newer and social tended uh, to come up worse um, but uh, people generally reported, and we, we heard this in the news at the time, that people were more friendly during that period. Okay, so uh, again, a few quotes. People were enjoying uh, being at home, meeting meeting neighbours, uh, doing their gardens, and, and all those sort of things. There were sort of some silver linings from, from that period of enforced time at home, although not everything was positive. Some people were really grumpy that there was a lot of people in ho at home in their neighbourhoods, when normally they had their neighbourhoods all to their self, and it was nice and quiet. Um, and particularly people in London, I think, really suffered because of often the, the much reduced space standards that people have uh, uh, in, in this city. So there were some issues there. All right, so, so what was interesting, I suppose, was that this very much was reflecting what we were seeing in the international evidence about those critical things that people regard as vitally important uh, to their environment. And essentially, if you want to sum it up, you could say, well, what we should be building is this sort of place, uh, Goldsmith Street uh, in, in, in Norwich, um, which is connected, it's walkable, it's green, it's mixed, it's you know, low traffic, uh, compact, coherent, and helps to build a community. What we shouldn't be doing uh, is building Miller's Field in Norwich, just built at exactly the same time, just three miles down the road. Um, and we shouldn't be building this because it's disconnected, it's parking dominated, it's hard, it's single use, car dependent, sprawling and socially isolated. We finished the uh, Home Compass report with a few recommendations. I'm not going to go through all of these now, just to pick out a few. Um, 
One was that all new homes and newly converted homes should have mandated access to private open space, even if it's just a balcony. That seemed to be really, really critical to people's sense of well-being. So somewhere, if you like, to talk to the birds. That's what people need. Somewhere to talk to the birds. Without exception, all new and newly converted homes should be built to decent national minimum space standards really again really fundamental so we need to talk to the birds but we also need to be able to swing a cat so we need space to be able to swing a cat as well as talking to the birds we need to have the aspiration that everybody should live within five minutes walk of a significant green space or park and never more than 10 minutes that seems to be absolutely critical Somewhere to walk a dog, in other words. That, again, is really important. So swing a cat, talk to the birds, and walk a dog. And then we need to be able to live within five minutes, ideally, certainly no more than 10 minutes, of critical local facilities, such as shopping. Again, really fundamental. So we can feed the family. Um, so, again, you know, these are really basic requirements supported in the international evidence uh, and supported through the survey. And then finally, that everybody, no matter who they are, uh, uh, whether we're in private housing or social housing, should have access to essentially these basic requirements of place. Uh, so all of those things should be available to all of us. So uh, that's it. If you're interested, the Home Comforts Report can be downloaded from the Place Alliance website. Thank you very much. <laughs>